Professional Bowlers Association Summer Tour on ESPN is being brought to you by Budweiser Beachwood Aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Price Fister, the fabulous faucet with the funny name. And by Midas and its dealers across the country. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Now let's preview tonight's top five finalists, making his first appearance in the championship round since 1986. It's 33-year-old Billy Young Jr. of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. His opponent in match number one is two-time PBA champion Mark McDowell of Madison, Wisconsin. After a fifth-place finish here a year ago, 26-year-old Norm Duke has qualified in the middle of the stack, while the only left-hander on today's telecast, John Massa, has nailed down the runner-up position. And, of course, for the fourth time in his 18-year PBA career, Butch Soper will need to win just one match, the title game, in order to clinch his fourth career PBA championship. Welcome everyone to Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl, located in beautiful Dublin, California for today's championship round finals of the $140,000 Kessler Open. Hi everybody, I'm Denny Schreiner and welcome to Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California. And of course, this is the first of 12 live PBA Summer Tour events on ESPN. It gives me great pleasure once again to introduce my color commentating partner, PBA Hall of Famer, the only player to win three Firestone Tournament of Champions, Mike Durbin. Michael, Butch Soper is 40 years old. You're the only one between you and I that's plus 40. Does he have a chance to win today? <laughs> right away, Denny. Uh, historically on the PBA Tour, once a guy turns 40, it gets tougher and tougher to win. However, there are exceptions. Uh, I had my best years once I turned 40, so Butch, we never know how he's going to react. Maybe he'll, he'll have his best years after 40. All right, an extra attraction for our viewers across the country here this afternoon. We'll be utilizing the services of Mark Baker, who won this event back in 1987, finished sixth a year ago and 11th this year. And Mark, why do you bowl so well here at Earl Anthony's place? Uh, I, will, I really wish I knew. Uh, uh, here in uh, Riviera and Akron, my, by far my two best houses. I just seem to carry the 10th in here better any place else. I uh, just wish I could do it more often. Let's talk about the scoring condition and how you won an 87 here as compared to finishing 11th here this week. 87 played third, fourth arrow with a ton of oil, all hold. This week, uh, very little oil, had to throw it real hard. My back's killing me today. All right, a versatile player nonetheless, Mike Durbin. You had to use a lot of different shots uh, in your years on the PBA Tour, but it, it appears this week that you had to throw it pretty hard and keep it on line in order to strike. Well, Dan, the lanes are really hooking excessively this week, so the guys compensated in one of two ways. As you said, they either threw the ball very, very hard, or they got a very hard piece of equipment and threw it straight. Those are the guys that are on the telecast tonight that adhere to that philosophy. All right, $23,000 in first place prize money on the line, this being the $140,000 Kessler Open. Coming up, an outstanding match between Mark McDowell and Billy Young Jr. We'll be back with the PBA Summer Tour on ESPN, coming up next. Man, what a day. I could sure use a vacation. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to be right in here. Hey, hey. Ice cold, bud. Hey, maybe tomorrow we should bring the boss. Nah. <laughs> you bet we're finicky. At Price Fister, when we make a faucet, we make it fit for a king. So we start with a foundation of solid brass inside, which makes it so durable, it's flat out terrific. Then we finish it to a fairly well outside and price it to please the frugal in everyone. Price Fister, the fabulous faucet with a funny name. If you think a muffler is something you just stick under your car, Think again. The wrong one can really hurt your engine performance and fuel economy. We know. We've been engineering, building, and installing mufflers for 34 years. You get a muffler here, it's Midas quality. It's installed by Midas trained experts and guaranteed for as long as you own your car. All at a great price. At Midas, we do the job once and we do it right. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. What's the smart money doing for the next 36 months? For as little as $374 a month, leasing a Cadillac Sedan DeVille. 
374 a month on America's most powerful, most spacious front drive luxury sedan. Making leasing smarter than ever, Cadillac style. And a $2,000 cash bonus direct from Cadillac on other selected models. Welcome back, everyone, to Earl Anthony Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California, where for the seventh consecutive year, the good folks at Kessler have sponsored this fine event. $23,000 in first place prize money on the line. But uh, before we get to the championship game, we've got Billy Young Jr. and also Mark McDowell here in the opening match. Uh, very first shot of our summer tour series, Mike Durbin. Uh, nice to have you back. Nice to be back, Denny. It's nice to see a player like Billy Young who hasn't been on the telecast, I think, since 1986. You know, uh, bowl well enough to get back out here. People watching this are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's throwing a blue dot here on the national televised finals. Lane's really hooked quite a bit this week. Billy has always uh, liked it when they, he could throw it a little bit right and get it back. Uh, the guys have compensated by drilling very, very hard equipment. The blue dot is over a 90 hardest bowling ball on a, a scale that we measure it with. And that means that the ball's not going to hook as much, but the, even it's hooking in this condition. Nice thing about this is the fact that he doesn't have to drill up a spare ball. That is a nice advantage. See? Didn't think I'd recognize that, did you? I think you recognize everything, Danny. Cross lane, no problem with the 10 pin. And obviously we mentioned Mark Baker, who won here in 1987, joining us in the booth here for this first telecast. Uh, Nice to have him along. Well, some of his insightful commentary. He bowled all week long here and finished 11th. First good look at Martin McDowell of Madison, Wisconsin. And nearly averts the 4-9 right off the bat. Mark McDowell playing a little bit further inside than uh, Billy Young is, but he's bellying the ball out. Almost got a bad break there with the ball finishing so hard, as we're talking about all week long, that he had the 4-9 standing until the pin came off the uh, sideboard and got it. Four pin relatively easy spare two-time champion and waiting at this point in time for his wife Patty to show up from the airport. Mark mentioned to me that uh, he's going to have to win at least a couple of games because she's a little bit late. Mark Baker, let's take a look now at Mark McDowell's game. Okay, Mark has a real simple game, five-step, real nice push away, shoulder level, free swing, and you see his leg strength uh, from the football days, real solid to foul line. He's uh, turned into a hell of a bowler. And if you take a look at the players on the telecast here this afternoon, he probably looks at more than any of the other four. He comes right back with a nice shot on lane 33 for our first strike of the match. Interesting that Mark McDowell, I think, is using a pearlized urethane ball. Well, Billy Young is using the old uh, polyester plastic bowling ball. So the guys compensated in different ways in what they chose for equipment here. came over in a hurry. Looked like uh, Billy set it a little short that time, Mark, but he got a great reaction. Yeah, he got it out there. The, the dry boards are right of the first arrow, and if you just get it out there, it'll come back every time. Thing to watch here, as they say, when they, we talk about saying it short, it means that he let it down quicker than we thought. Now watch the head pin here. Comes flying back off like a bullet and gets that 10 pin. Reminiscent ten pin? of so many of those Durbin strikes right, through I, the years. I knew you were going to say that, then. I thought they invented that messenger after your game. Somebody shot my message. Ah, a little bit of a wall shot there. So for Young, it's a quick double in the second and the third. He now takes a 10-pin lead. Mark, uh, what kind of equipment did you use throughout the week? I started with a uh, black U-dot hooking ball, and I just uh, geared down every day to a slate, and then finally a black knight, which I've never thrown before. I hope to never throw again. Well, you told me that uh, you drilled up a couple of balls for each and every day. This one looked like almost a double hopper from McDowell, but he ends up coming right back with a double of his own and ties the match. Mark's a tough player. He uh, came into his own last year when he won two tournaments. He won in Fresno, and then later on in the summer, he won our senior turning pro doubles with the great Dick Weber. Um, he'd get close before, but it just seemed like he was lacking a little confidence, and that's the missing ingredient that seems to be in his game now. In 1986, he won better than $51,000 and was named the PBA Rookie of the Year and, of course, set a scoring record and also an earnings record that season for a first-year player. Plenty of room, leaves the 2-8 and nearly ended up with the 2-8-10. Seemed like Mark got a stump down around that one a little too much. To, uh, didn't get underneath the ball as well as the last two, and it spun down the lane for him. 
You talk about getting the thumb down. Can you be a little more specific? Well, he, his thumb was too, uh, in the left of the, when he let go of it, he got it down left, and he more spun over the top of the ball instead of through the ball like the previous two shots. Reminiscent of so many of the shots that I used to throw. Oh, I was waiting for the jab, Denny. <laughs> all right, all right. We're one apiece here, Mr. Durbin. A two-pin lead for Billy Young Jr. We'll be back with more of the PBA Summer Tour on ESPN right after these messages. There's something about the way it moves me. There's something about the way it moves me, too. There's something special about a Lancaster Dodge, because it's more, more, more. It's more than a car. Customer satisfaction, large inventory selection, great deals, and nobody beats a Lancaster Dodge deal. It's something special about a Lancaster Dodge, and it's more, 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 it's more than a car. Stock up during the summer white sale on Fieldcrest Royal Velvet Classic Towels with coordinating fancies and accessories for your bath. On sale now at Watt & Chan. Watt & Chan freshens your bed with dreamy percales and your choice of cotton or cotton blends. Many with matching comforters. And on sale now at Watt & Chan. Thick and thirsty towels soak up the savings at Watt & Chan. Choose from 100% cotton and cotton blends. Perfect for pool or bath. On sale now at Watt & Chan. Say it ain't so. There's no way Earl is 50-plus, Mark Baker. Well, uh, I'm sure the seniors wish he wasn't 50. Uh, that pride got to him, and uh, last week he showed why he's probably the best that ever lived. Winning last week the Showboat PBA Seniors Championship in Las Vegas, his second seniors title. Of course, he has 41 regular national tour events. All-time winning player on the PBA Tour. Billy Young leading by two and... He wishes he had that shot back. Well, it's interesting, you know, he got away with that exact same shot the time before where the ball just seemed to slip off. He seemed to lose it at the bottom of the swing, and he got the strike. This time he lost it again, and the ball speed went down, and boom. The penalty was uh, what we call double pinnacle. First open frame, unless something dramatic happens here in the fourth. Billy Young Jr. opens up the door. Told me that uh, the biggest difference in this event was after the opening round, he went and drilled up that bowling ball and gave him a lot more confidence throughout the week. Takes a good look at the rack on the left-hand lane. Championship pair here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl, lanes 33 and 34. speed attached to that shot, but let me pose this question to you, Mark Baker. When you're throwing harder shelled equipment like that, your carry, your percentage of carry isn't going to be as good. Uh, not near as much as when you throw a urethane ball. You, uh, you're right about that. He, uh, yeah, you don't want to be soft like the last shot in, uh, this week. If you're soft, it was a split 95% of the time. McDowell, while sitting on the bench, has taken a 16-pin lead. I might mention to anyone, personally, he may be in a position where he thinks he needs to add a piece of tape, but he's afraid he'll hang. If he would just blow in that thumb hole, it could create enough moisture that he'd be able to hang on to it. That's what Marshall Holman has done through all those years. Right. Butch Soper does that, too, I think, doesn't he? Mike what? Albee does. Yep. Yeah, well, virtually every shot. McDowell trying to jump on the opportunity. Plenty of speed, and he kind of backhands the four pin. And uh, Mark Baker, did you have any success tripping the four this week? Uh, the first day, I had a lot of success. I was like, uh, it was back to my favorite house. I was carrying everything the first day. Uh, Friday got to me. Not too many trip fours on Friday. I know if you continue to excel in this bowling center, you'll be trying to buy a piece of it from Earl Anthony before it's all said and done. Too bad uh, we don't bowl here every week. McDowell looking to double up and extend the lead to 26. Gives it plenty of room, and he has jumped all over the opportunity. Well, that's the mark of an outstanding player, you know. Uh, you guys expect that on the PBA Tour. If they open, they know that their opponent <laughs> is going to jump on them. Billy Young's got to regroup. He's just thinking back, and he's got to get the ball over the foul line on this right lane. Set it a touch short the last time. Not enough speed and left the big four. It's been the balance in the match thus far. A little more direct this time around, and guess what? It's the same result. Just not firm enough, in my opinion, anyway, with the, that speed. I know, Mark, you mentioned uh, to me that you could not miss left this week. If you missed left, you were in deep trouble. 
Yeah, there, there's absolutely no hold, and like Billy's just not quite getting the ball out in the lane like he was last night when he really bowled well. Shakes his head, and uh, so many times as you watch the professional, not only in match play, but also in the championship round, they get zeroed in on one lane, but then the other lane presents some problems. That's obviously, Mark Baker, what's happening to Billy Young on the right-hand lane. He made that shot in the second frame when he got it out and he struck, and uh, the next two shots, he, think he, he thought he threw them both fairly well. You can tell he thinks he's lined up, and out of nowhere, the ball splits. That's the worst feeling to have. When you think you're lined up and you're splitting, that means uh, it's a quick day on TV. Mm -hmm. And when you think you've made that quality shot and, and you don't realize that something's wrong. Down by 42 and uh, starting to think about Fresno, California, which is the PBA Touring Pro's next stop. A little better angle of approach. Doesn't quite get the kick of the four. And so Billy Young Jr., who won his only PBA title back in 1985, struggling here in the opening game. Well, Mark McDowell's just got to keep his mind on his uh, work. He seems to have this match well in hand. Right now, we're already getting into uh, what are the possibilities. And I think uh, the best that Billy can get if he strikes out is 206. So Mark just needs to, quote, keep his nose clean or his frames clean. Easier said than done this week at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. We'll be back with the conclusion of match number one, the $140,000 Kessler Open, live from Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California, right after these messages. Remember how much fun it was to color. It still is with Dutch Boy Satin Finish Paint for the look that gets the looks year after year. You can see why it's worth more. Rico back speed. Rico's auto dial makes super fast transmissions. Power. Rico fax power, the world's first dual roll fax. Rico plain paper fax. Rico, where imagination becomes reality. To find the Rico office nearest you, dial 1-800-63-RICO. No, man. Yeah, you, you're the second best cop in LA. That's funny, I hear the same thing about you. Get ready for Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell in a movie full of... Action. Action. Good old American action. Tango and Cash, rented on video cassette now. Back of a bat. Can't be beat with baseball. All night to week. Major League. Under the light. ESPN Baseball tonight. Tuesday, Friday, double letter. Sunday, watch the fun, Sunday night. The Cubs face the Phillies on Sunday Night Baseball, live at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Well, without question, Mark Baker will be watching the Phillies as they take on the Cubs from Veterans Stadium, 8 p.m. Eastern Time tonight on ESPN because your good buddy Lenny Dykstra will be playing. Yeah, he uh, dropped down here 400 this week, but uh, he's still leading the National League in hitting, and I'm very proud of him. And, of course, the reason why he's hitting the cover off the baseball is because he confers with you daily uh, concerning his hitting skills. Well, uh, not about his t uh, tobacco chewing skills, that's okay. for sure. Right. None of that on the PBA Tour. I mean, sticking on the approach is one thing, but... Uh... <laughs> One player right now is having, who is having no difficulty whatsoever in figuring out the championship here is Mark McDowell, who now has struck in the fifth, sixth, and the seventh, leads by 52, and he is basically at this point in time getting loose. He's just cruising right now. Next in line, Norm Duke, John Mazza, qualifying number two, and Butch Soper, our top seed this week. Yeah, toot the whistle. It's a cave-in for McDowell. When things are going your way, they're going your way. He's uh, he just uh, really real long on that shot. He uh, stayed to the ball real long. Just got that real lucky break and caved out the bucket. Watch the head pin. Barely hit the two. In fact, it actually didn't hit the one. Nor did they say in order to get a strike, the one pin has to hit the two. That time it didn't, and he still got a strike. Billy Young, who says, I knew... I could strike on lane 34. It was just a question of time. And, of course, you always strike when you're out of the wood. Well, that's a, that's a given, Denny. Billy Young Jr., nonetheless, an outstanding week for him. He'd like to finish things off. If he could take this off the sheet, he could still shoot a game of 206, but it won't be nearly enough. Still, they're all proud out here, Denny. Want to salvage something. 
Shot rolls up. Once again, can't quite trip out the four. I think every time when he got a strike up, he got a little soft with the shot. Do you realize that when you're out there in the championship round, Mike? I, I know when you're so isolated, uh, do you feel like you throw the ball a little slower than you normally do in a regular well, event? Well, you, you have to know how you personally respond to pressure. Personally, myself, I had the tendency to do just that, to throw it a little soft. Other guys throw it harder under pressure. So it, it, and you have to realize what your, your mistake is and then compensate for it. So under pressure, I would think, keep your speed up. Mm -hmm. I know, Mark, you're shaking your head. You go the other way. I, was, I always throw it hard. Uh, that's my size, and uh, I get a little nervous. I always throw a little too hard and leave a lot of buckets. Well, the interesting thing about McDowell's shot, Mark Baker, is that it almost seems to be rolling out at the head pin. Uh, I think everybody's ball rolled out just about all week, except for Butch Sopers. Uh, there's so much dry out there that the ball's used up all of its energy by the end of the lane, and uh, it's just kind of stopped, and it's like an optical illusion. It's rolling to the right. What never ceases to amaze me is one PBA player can go out and struggle to shoot maybe 180 or 190, and then the other guy is whacking him at a 268 pace. 268 pace, then. Well, obviously, uh, Patty McDowell, if she is still en route from the San Francisco International Airport, will uh, maybe get an opportunity to see her husband bowl at least in game number two if he keeps winning. I don't know, when you get in this situation, you're almost hoping you get tapped because you don't want to waste the strikes oh, come on, you need don't for start the next on me. game. Don't start on me with that. <laughs> well, right now, he doesn't care if he gets tapped. But, but you that, never do, no. That's why he is striking. Don't you understand yeah. that? Bowling is a mental game, Mark. Why would you think about a tap now? No, I just like keep striking. Uh, least amount of shots as possible is my theory, and uh, spares are uh, they're too hard. To, they're too easy to miss. I like throwing strikes. Okay, uh, if he strikes here, a game of 268. So quickly out of the shoot comes Mark McDowell. Looked like he got his thumb underneath that one a little bit, and finally. After Durbin puts the negative thought into his mind, he leaves the soft 10. A wonderful game, though. A game of 267, and uh, Michael, you got to love starting that way. Nine strikes, nine out of 12. Yeah, I'm up here with Danny. My name's Larry. Strung seven consecutive strikes together, and that was more than enough to get the job done. Billy Young Jr. Yeah. will have to wait for yet another championship round appearance to win PBA title number two. After it's been a couple, three years since you've uh, gotten to the championship round, though, Mark Baker, it has to feel good to get to the final five. Yeah, that's the whole goal every week, just to make the top five. Uh, whatever you get on TV, I think is kind of gravy. Uh, anything can happen on top five. Uh, I'm sure Billy's proud just to be out there and uh, break that jinx, get back on TV. And it has to give you plenty of confidence heading into the remainder of the summer tour. Well, the condition's been pretty much the same the last oh, six weeks, so he knows he's bowled well the last six weeks. He has to be looking forward to every tournament from now on. Out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Interesting note, his dad won the ABC All Events Championship back in 1962. So outstanding bowling has run through the young family. Billy finishes it out with a wave in a game of 175. Drops the opening game 267 to 175. And we'll be back with more of the $140,000 Kessler Open live from Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California, right after this. What's the smart money doing for the next 36 months? For as little as $374 a month, leasing a Cadillac Sedan DeVille. $374 a month on America's most powerful, most spacious front drive luxury sedan. Making leasing smarter than ever, Cadillac style. And a $2,000 cash bonus direct from Cadillac on other selected models. There's more than one way to win cash in McDonald's Dick Tracy Crime Stopper game. Give it up, prune face. Collect the mobsters from your game cards and watch for their ugly mug shots each week at McDonald's. Make a match and you can make a million. Aha! There's the old pucker put. We solved that case without a wrinkle. <laughs> we? Dick Tracy. The movie is only in theaters. I'm revving them out. Game is only at McDonald's. And the finalists by a round, and the number that jumps right out of the blue is, look at Maza, 88th, tied for 88th after the end of the opening round, jumped all the way to 9th, and told me the biggest key for him there, Mark Baker, was a little adjustment in wrist position. He did it the final game of the opening round, and 
He made up a lot of ground. He uh, he was high that night. He came out of nowhere. He was bowling right next to me. He see me shooting 250 every game. And all the players, all told, averaged 197.92. A little better than 210 to qualify and 204.1 just to cash, Michael. Scores are on the low side. Anytime you have lanes hooking that much, not everyone can adjust. Take a look at some of the other numbers provided. Size of the field, 160. That's capacity. And uh, our qualifying leader was in at 4085. And it's time now to take a look at Mike Durbin's average builders, the only player in PBA history ever to win a tournament using three steps, four steps, and five steps. Watch this. On this summer's ESPN telecast, as well as on this afternoon's telecast, you're going to see bowlers using a variety of different approaches and different deliveries. This afternoon, we have two players, Billy Young and John Mazza, that use a four-step delivery. We have another two, Mark McDowell and our tournament leader, Butch Soper, that use five steps. And then we have Norm Duke, who uses six. So what I'd like to do for our opening tip this summer is to look at these different deliveries, plus one more. Now, we're going to start with four steps. And the reason I start with four is because that's what I use. Plus, I think it's the easiest to learn, the easiest to teach, and less can go wrong with your delivery in a four-step approach. The way it works is I'm basically standing with my feet reasonably close together. I may want to put my right foot a little bit behind my left, but basically I want to keep most of the weight on my left foot. The ball is in my right hand. If I'm right-handed, of course, you left-handers just turn it around to the other side for you. What I'm thinking here is right hand, right heel together at the same time, and I push the ball about as far as I step. And there is the first step. At this point, I let go with my left hand, and gravity pulls the ball down alongside my right leg in the second step. My left arm is out here for balance and to square up my approach. At this point, the swing continues on up, and the ball is a little too heavy to lift, but the point is that the ball should be at the peak of the backswing in the third or the next to the last step. And then my fourth step is what I recommend, a nice long slide. And the way it looks in actual practice is like this. And it's one, two, three, slide. There's four steps. Now we'll look at five. Five is used by a lot of different players on the tour. And I think one of the big reasons they use it is because it gives them a little trigger step to start a little bit more rhythm and flow to their approach. What I do is I move back on the approach a little bit here and I shift. Most of my weight is going to be on my right foot because I'm starting with my left. And the first step is a, usually a small step depending on the individual, but it just steps out about like so. I haven't moved the ball. From here on out, it's just like a four-step delivery. The ball goes out, down, back on the third step, and then a slide. This is what it looks like. There's five steps. Now we'll try six. Six is being used on tonight's telecast, this afternoon's telecast, by Norm Duke because he wants to get more speed. He's trying to generate a little bit more speed in his delivery, and he feels he can do it with six steps. I have to move further back. This is as far back as I've ever stood toward the end of the approach. Again, most of my weight is on my left foot. What I'm going to do now is take two steps and not move the ball. It goes like this. I start with the right, then the left, and from here on out, again, it's just like a four-step delivery as the five was after the first step. Let's see what it looks like, if I can do it here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now there's one more delivery that i like to show you that nobody is using on the PBA Tour now. But it's a delivery that I use throughout my career sometimes, and a delivery that many people use when they start off the game. And that's three steps. A lot of people will start with three steps, and then an instructor will come along and say, you can't use three, and he'll switch them to four. But I believe three is a really viable approach for many amateur bowlers. What happens with three, I need to move up on the approach in front of the 12-foot line. Again, most of the weight is on my right foot, and what you need to think about with the three-step delivery is I need to get the ball down as quickly as possible. It has to come down here 
quickly. The timing is going to be slightly later, but we try and get it into motion as soon as possible, and that's what you want to think about. And it looks like this. One, two, three. There you have it. Three, four, five, and six steps. The thing that you need to do is to pick out the delivery that's best for you and work on that and improve it. We'll see you again Thursday night in St. Charles for the Senior Open there. And of course, the key is how many steps do you want to take to move up the step ladder here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. $23,000 on top of the $140,000 Kessler Open. Four players remain. Our upcoming match, Mark McDowell and Norm Duke. Don't go away. We'll be back with game number two. In this game, it takes more control, more power, more precision, more curve. One ball has it all. One ball dominates winning on the Pro Tour. The Black U-Dot from Columbia 300. The Black U-Dot, the ball of champions. Columbia 300, sold only in lanes or pro shops. Nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. The one and only. The clean, the crisp, the cold. The king of beers. Nothing beats the blood. Nothing beats the king of beers. Nothing beats the blood. Fresh from his 267-175 victory over Billy Young Jr., Mark McDowell now takes on Norm Duke out of Fort Worth, Texas. In game number two, the winner of this one takes on John Mazza, Butch Soper, our top seed this week at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California. McDowell with nine strikes in game number one, a double and a seven-bagger. Let's see how he starts game number two. Picks up right where he left off. Speed was just slightly down, but he's not enough. He got away and tripped the four pin. Toughest thing in the world, I guess, has to be coming back, Mark Baker, after a five or a six, seven minute break after you've won a match. Yeah, you've uh, you got that first win of your belt, and you kind of relax. So you come back, and your ball speed is always a little less because you, you feel so good winning that first game. It's, it's tough to get that ball speed back up. Norm Duke. Right up the track and uh, leaves the nine pin. And that's as high as a backswing as I've ever seen Norm Duke have right there. He's really forcing that uh, delivery to throw as hard as he possibly can. What kind of a toll did that take on most of the players this week, Mark, having to throw the ball that hard that long? Personally, uh, you know, I have a, my back doesn't feel too good sometimes. It takes a lot out of you because you can't get soft on any shot. And after 42 games in three days, it, it, take, it takes something out of you. Little backup ball at the spare, so Duke for the spare up in the first. Norm takes a six step. The first two doesn't move the ball. And then his swing is real high, as high as I've ever seen it. He's real low to the ground when he starts that low, but and he just gets his ball really whipping through it real firm today. One thing we want to keep an eye on as well is look at where that toe ends up. Very, very close to the foul line. And he was back then, Dan. I mean, he's been closer than that. Again, solid hit for Norm Duke on the left-hand lane. Here's the left-hand lane is a smidge tighter than the right. Smidge? Is a smidge more than a freckle or less? <laughs> uh, I don't know about the same. Five years. Oh, it's just a freckle more than the other lane. We've never yet determined how much a freckle is. Not much. McDowell comes back, solid hit, and the six pin just goes whistling around the tent. And did you see that ball quit at the pocket? It actually rolled out right at the pocket, and I think that's why he left the solid tent. All right, who was the greatest roll-up player of all time, Mike Durbin? The greatest roll-up player of yep. all time? This is opinion. I don't know. Dick this Ricker? Dick Ricker? Okay. All right. Dick Ricker, probably the most successful television bowler in the history of the PBA. He didn't lose many when he... And got to the championship round. If I had somebody throwing a strike for my life, I would have picked Dick Ricker. Mm -hmm. Now this one's all tied up after two frames. Duke is on the strike. Meanwhile, Mark McDowell, now in the third. A player with, uh, I think, tremendous potential, wouldn't you say, Michael? 
It's always been there. You know, he came right on out, and he was Rookie of the Year in 1986. Uh, seemed to hit a low, and then finally won last year. We thought that would just uh, open the gates. Two-time All-America out of West Texas State University. Settles in and flushes it on the left-hand lane. You know, what does happen in these conditions sometimes then is as the bowlers bowl, the oil, what's out there, gets carried further down the lane. Now, in that particular shot, I thought it might run high, but it does seem that uh, Mark McDowell has just a hair hold in where he's playing the lanes. He's playing a little further left than Norm Duke is. Fairly solid season thus far for Norm. Stayed in that shot a long time. The ball went long, and he leaves the soft 10. He is throwing hard. I... What would you say miles per hour these guys are throwing it right now? I think Norm is throwing it upwards of 18, 19 miles per hour right now. I don't think Mark McDowell is throwing it quite as hard as Norm Duke is. Well, you know, the thing that was really interesting, and I'll ask Mark Baker this question, when he came out of the ball there, his hand was almost straight. didn't look like he had any fingers in that shot at all. He's uh, throwing it right off the back. When he's throwing it so hard, he's actually popping off the shot. When he throws the ball, he's putting everything he owns into it. Coming out of the ball, almost looks like that old Glenn Allison release, you know, where you almost kind of wave at the pins. Glenn was very, well, that's kind of like the Butch Soper for the release well, sure. this week, too. Well, the point I'm making is that you don't necessarily really want to put that much lift on the ball. This is almost like an old lacquer shot, isn't it? Don't you want the ball to, to maybe do some of the work or yeah. let the lane do it? Probably hooking even more than some of the old lacquer conditions right here this week. Well, this is a rocket from the right side, and Duke really likes lane 33. Throws a confident shot there. And this one's very close indeed, all evened up here at the early stages of game number two. We'll be back with more from Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl right after this. I got the job. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, who told you about the National Business Employment Weekly? Who told you it has hundreds of high-paying jobs open all across the country? Professional, technical, managerial? I thought I told you about it. How the articles help you get a job. Write sharper resumes. Have better interviews. No, no, no. I told you, remember? How to get along with your boss, get a raise, get promoted. Mm, let me see. You told me about the great jobs in the National Business Employment Weekly? And the help in landing them. And doing better on the job. So I really owe my new job to you? Well... Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> I told him. Get the National Business Employment Weekly at your newsstand or order by credit card and get eight issues by first-class mail for $35. Call 800-372-3000. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. It's the last major tune-up for Wimbledon and the starting point for a Grand Slam dream. See the finals of the Stella Artois Grass Court Championship Sunday afternoon at 3 Eastern on ESPN. Match is evened up here in the fourth. Mark McDowell looking to double and uh, take the early lead here in game number two. Here it comes. There it is. Identical shot to the second frame. Not much he can do. You know, that's the difference between 260 and 200 sometimes is those solid tens in between strikes. Mark Baker, did you leave uh, a lot of solid tens this week? If I didn't leave any solid tens, I wouldn't be sitting here. I'd be down there bowling. Okay, that explains that. I guess that's the key each and every week for the professionals, though. Uh, it seems that the guys are all uh, quality players. They're all able to hit the pocket, but it's those who come up with a percentage of carry. It's, yeah, it's, it's how many strikes can you string together. Uh, you're going to leave 10 pins no matter what you do. It's, if you can throw those four, five, and six baggers consistently every week, uh, that's what you're making the TV show. When you're leaving about every other shot, it's, it's real tough. All right, so McDowell and Duke tied at this point, nearing the midway point of uh, game number two. The only left-hander on the telecast, John Mazza. Next in line, he qualified number two. Butch Soper, our top seed this week. It's been a good lane for McDowell thus far, and once again, he flushes it on lane 33. And so far, we have, uh, from my count is right, we've got five strikes on 33, and nary a strike on 34 in this match. Now, here's a good look at the PBA watch and the clock, and uh, the player has to get the shot off within 25 seconds, correct? That's correct. Norm Duke uh, was fined earlier in Peoria because he didn't get it off within 25 seconds. Oh, he asked for the message, and the messenger delivered that time, slicing out the 10-pin. So for Duke, it's a double and a 10-pin lead. 
And you watch, just watch him come up at the line because he's throwing so hard and he wants to make sure he stays behind the foul line. Now watch the head pin. When that pin comes back across 99 times out of 100, it's that head pin. Little pirouette performance that time, talking at home, and uh, the fist being shown early on, uh, right around the back stretch in this one. Raising up on the shot, and he nearly paid the price that time, Michael. You know, he didn't do that at all in the whole practice session, Den. And in the practice session, there's a black line at the foul line. And he was going into that, into that black line. Now he doesn't want to even fool with the foul. And watch him at the foul line here as he comes up, although the ball's gone. But that's in an effort to stay behind the foul line, I think, anyway. So the first double of the match in the fourth in the fifth for Norm Duke. Larry Lickstein, PBA Players Service Director, uh, operating the watch. And uh, I want to get back to that a little more because uh, there's a brand new rule for the PBA touring players and for the seniors as well. We'll develop that perhaps the next time Norm steps up. McDowell, meanwhile, trying to get something started. And now he's come up with a double. He threw that ball. Uh, it actually wasn't as good as the last two shots. It hit a little lighter. That's probably why Kerry didn't hit quite as hard. Interesting, too, because he went wider with the shot, and the ball actually rolled out more at the pocket. That ball was definitely going straight as it hit the 1-3, but it knocked the 6-pin, six 6-pin six knocked the 10 right out of there. Let me pose a question to you. Is it better to have the ball rolling out at the pocket or continuing to hook to the left? Well, I never had my ball hooked to the left. You have to ask Mark. <laughs> You're right. We do have a contrast in styles in the booth here this afternoon. This one rolls up way too high, and disaster strikes for McDowell here in the seventh. The one mistake. Uh, watch his thumb. His, the problem has been if his thumb has gone down, looked good at that point, and it just hooked too quick on the left. He buried that speed one mile per hour, and it can be the difference between a strike and six and eight out. McDowell has to do his best to cover up the count, but he trails right now by 14. A complete reversal of what happened to Mark McDowell in game number one when he shot 267. Back with a conclusion right after this. How to make good old-fashioned ice tea. First, put the kettle on the flame. While you're waiting, bag your pot. Watch the telly. Check the kettle. Back your flat. Bring up your brother. Check the kettle. Now there's a faster way to make fresh brewed iced tea. By Mr. Coffee. Makes two quarts of refreshing iced tea in less time than it takes to boil water. Walk your feet, come back, check the kettle. The iced teapot by Mr. Coffee. The modern way to make old fashioned iced tea. Introducing new extra strength Rolades. 250 milligrams stronger than Tums EX. 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. This settles it once and for all. In about 10 minutes, you can either begin making fresh brewed iced tea, or you can begin drinking it. Mm. The Iced Tea Pot by Mr. Coffee, the modern way to make old-fashioned iced tea. McDowell, with the open in the seventh, has given Norm Duke a 14-pin lead here in the seventh. As he stands up on lane 34, the right-hand lane. Should mention that uh, on the 25 second rule with the clock is running right now. Yeah, lady, come Norm on, throws come this on. shot and leaves the soft 10. The first violation of that rule is a hundred dollar fine for the player on the the turning players. The second violation is a thousand dollar fine, and every fi violation after that is a thousand dollars. Doesn't that seem to be a bit high? That was it was discussed. Uh, for a great amount of time at the tournament committee meeting and the executive board, and that was what the Turing players came up with. I mean, why would you take away pins? Well, the seniors have done that. Uh, the seniors that we'll be covering next Thursday night in uh, St. Charles have decided that for every violation uh, that occurs during the game, it's a five-pin penalty. Well, I mean, if you look at what golf has done through the years, slow play is a two-shot penalty. Well, that's, uh, you know... <laughs> Different people have different opinions on different subjects, and uh, the seniors thought differently than the train players here. 13-pin advantage, down on one knee, and a gorgeous shot on lane 33 for Norm Duke. And Mark McDowell's not out of this match yet. Down 13 pins, he still has a potential score of 225 if he can strike out. So 
It's these situations now that separate winning titles from not winning titles. The guys that can perform in the 8th, ninth, and 10th. Good acceleration, plenty of room, and that may have been his best shot of the match. That definitely, he got to that ball real firm, got way out there, and he came back real hard. That ball didn't roll out nearly as much as the other three. And Patty, after watching her husband throw it through the nose, gets to see the other side of the spectrum as she's just come into the bat well, bowling center. She gave him a little kiss in between frames, and maybe that's what uh, caused a little bit more speed. Oh, this one all the way out to about the one board, the danger one or two board, but back in rolling nicely, so McDowell keeps his hopes alive, needs a clutch shot here in the ninth. His most important shot of the week right now. Oh! What pin was that? Well, that's the guess. Uh, anybody up here know which one it was? I guess it was the six pin. Uh, it was the right pin is what it was. Yeah. I guess it was the six coming across to get it, so I guess we're not going to get a shot to find out. <laughs> well, now the pressure swings back to Duke in the ninth, who really isn't taking much time. Boy, did he throw that one great, I'll tell you. This is a new speedy Duke. We've uh, we got a new player on the tour. Well, oh, it's interesting ball. because you mentioned the fact that uh, that he is one of the more deliberate players on the national tour. Uh, Mark, you don't take a great deal of time up there. I'm, a, I'm one of the fastest guys on tour. I always wonder what they think about. I'd get too nervous to take that much time. I'd get up there and i hum it. Think about all the things that might go wrong, huh? Well, this one's come right down to the 10th. Uh, that's the way most PBA match games end up. Rolls it up, and the worst break of the week, and then finally the 10-pin drop as Norm Duke right now is beside himself. Well, either case, I mean, if he'd opened there, it would have been a terrible break. It's not a good break as it is, but he needs to make this spare and get at least eight. As we see the 710 standing there, the head pin comes back and delivers a mini message here. But at least he got the 10 out of there. Almost like a telegram. The crowd was reacting to the replay that they saw on the monitor. Smart play now by Duke. Step back, take a nice deep breath, relax. He knows what the score is. And, oh. My goodness, in a situation like that, to miss the seven. I never have understood players that shoot spares down the left side of the lane. Duke always shoots his left-hand spares that way. He's put Mark McDowell in the situation now. With one strike, he wins the match. McDowell right now working on a double. Final score for Norm Duke with the miss in the 10th, 205. Here it comes. Oh! I tell you, it's things like that that win titles. You never know. Well, that's why if you stay out here long enough, uh, there have been some tough breaks for Mark McDowell in the championship round as well. And there, Mark Baker, he's literally given a match right on a silver platter. That, uh, that pin that rolled across the deck and got that four pin out, he'll remember that. That was the key hit. If he doesn't strike there, it's all academic. Stay behind the line. Go ahead and throw the Brooklyn. Doesn't make any difference. Duke up off the bench. He has to be a little despondent at this point because he was in a position to win the match before he missed the seven pin. And Mark McDowell, just on that shot, showed his veteran experience. The only thing that could beat him then is if he had to send one out wide and it went in the channel. He made sure that didn't happen. He just threw a rocket at the head pin. So after defeating Billy Young Jr. 267 to 175, Mark McDowell now disposes of Norm Duke, who collects $6,000 for his fourth place finish. The final in this one, 214 to 205. So Mark McDowell continues to move up the stepladder here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California. Next in line will be John Mazza, our number two seed, and then the top seed this week, Butch Soper. Well, Patty got here just in time to watch her husband win game number two. We'll be back with uh, a look at the first edition of the Bowling News here on the PBA Summer Tour after these messages. BF Goodrich TA tires perform like great athletic shoes. They grab. They dig. They give you control. BF Goodrich TA tires. BF Goodrich TA tires. The athletic shoes for your car. BF Goodrich TA tires. Hey, what's with the two bottles? You gonna wash your hair twice? Oh, funny. 
It's shampoo and conditioner. Maybe you've heard of them. Yeah, I use them. But I get them both in one bottle with Fur Plus. That's great. But I gotta use dandruff shampoo. Yeah, me too. And that's why I got Fur Plus for dandruff. Let me see that. Dandruff shampoo plus conditioner in one. Hmm. Hey, my hair's clean, easy to manage, no flakes. It's beautiful. So let's go. Dandruff control, Pert Plus. Great hair, no flakes, no fuss. everyone to Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California. Hi again, everybody. I'm Denny Schreiner. And if you were one of the more than 50,000 participants who played in the 88th renewal of the American Bowling Congress Championships, which were recently concluded in Reno, Nevada, do me a favor. Keep an eye out for the postman because your paycheck is definitely in the mail. If you competed in the team event, you needed a score of at least 2,700 uh, to head to the pay window. Meanwhile, 1095 in the doubles competition also cashed, while a total of 565 in the singles was good enough also for a payout. And of course, finally, in the nine-game all-events category, anything 1740 or above was good enough to cash. All told, 9,199 teams bowled in this year's event, and believe it or not, there was a tie for the top spot. The Brunswick Rhinos from Tonawanda, New York, and the State Farm Team from Detroit both totaled 3201 and winning almost $10,000 per team. In the doubles competition, Bob Ufari and Mike Newman posted an outstanding score of 1448 en route to clinching that title. Only 23 pins back in the runner-up position were Dave Shojai and Terry Engel from nearby Walnut Creek, California. All it took to capture the coveted ABC singles crown was a three-game series of 791. Bob Hochrein of Dubuque, Iowa put together games of 278, 255, and 258, and he needed every stick because less than a mark separated the top three positions. The all events went to the individual star of this year's championships. That, of course, was Mike Newman of Tonawanda, New York. Mike won or shared four titles, joining ABC Hall of Famers Bill Lillard and Ed Lubansky as the only men to win four titles in a single tournament. Consistency on the PBA Tour pays off in a number of different ways. Of course, aside from winning prize money, the players are also awarded competitive points for their basic finishes in each and every tournament on the national tour. Over the past 18 months, the current PBA Player of the Year, Amleto Monticelli, has led the way on the PBA point list. He'll be making plans to be traveling to the Far East this coming October to compete in the Japan Cup, a tournament that he won back in 1988. Keep in mind the top 15 players off the PBA point list, plus defending champion Randy Peterson will be bowling uh, against a very talented field, which will also be featuring some of Japan's top players. And, of course, while we're on the subject of talking about bowling well in the land of the rising sun, who could ever forget the record-setting performance set by Billy Hardwick when he averaged 271 for the final four games of the 1968 Japan Gold Cup. Billy is a member of both the PBA and ABC Halls of Fame, and he added yet another honor when he was inducted into the San Mateo County Sports Hall of Fame. Along with such well-known athletes as Olympic track star Wendy Brown, baseball standouts Jim Fregosi and Keith Hernandez, and of course figure skating champion Debbie Thomas. Over the past four years, the PBA Summer Tour on ESPN has been shown live on Wednesday nights, but here in 1990, a few scheduling changes, so we want to keep you abreast of when the PBA Tour can be seen on ESPN. Here's a look. great pleasure at this point in time to introduce uh, the co-proprietor here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl, the great one himself, Earl Anthony. And uh, Earl, let's chat about that uh, senior's victory at the showboat uh, <laughs> last week, last Saturday. It was a tough one against Tita Semez. It was. Tita's always tough. He's a very experienced player. He's got five senior championships to his credit, and I think he's a senior leading money winner, uh, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, Tita and I have had some great matches over the years. That wasn't one of them, but <laughs> we do. Ha we've, over the years, we've had some great matches, and uh, it's always fun to go, go out there and bowl against people like Weber and Salvino, the old over-the-hill gang. Funny, a couple of years ago, you and I sat in the lounge here. We chatted about what you might do on the senior tour, and you told me very bluntly at that point in time, I don't know if I'm even going to bowl. I'm kind of tired two years later now, rejuvenated. You've been <laughs> practicing, working hard. Why the big change? Well, I don't, really don't know, Denny. I just, I just had this competitive fire in me, I guess, or something of that nature, and I just wanted to get out and get some competition. And I've been working very hard and changing my game, trying to develop more ball speed, a longer arm swing. And I've, a good friend of mine, Dean Johnson, up in Oregon, has been helping me a lot. He's been watching every ball for the last six weeks and says, oh, you're doing it wrong. You've got to do this, do that. So we made some major changes, and it's paying off. All right. Obviously, there are fewer games on the senior tournament schedule. Uh, <laughs> what kind of an effect does that have, and is it more difficult to win a seniors event or a regular touring event? Oh, I think it's much more difficult to win a regular tour event. Uh, the guys on the regular tour, for example, are out here to make a living. Uh, they work very hard in their game day after day. It's a job. The guys in the senior tour, it's more of a, of a fraternizing, uh, it's good to see you again, haven't seen you since last year type thing. Take your golf clubs along, we'll have dinner, oh, by the way, we have to bowl tomorrow, so don't forget, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. It's more of a fun thing, it's, uh, I think it's a much, much more relaxed atmosphere for the, uh, for the seniors, whereas the, the touring players, again, it's their job. Earl, thanks for stopping by, I know you're about ready to catch a flight to head to St. Charles, uh, maybe you'll win two senior events in a row. Well, it's going to be fun to bowl in Weber's, in Weber's Bowling Center again, it's been a long time. Well, let's hope he puts up a nice shot on the other side, perhaps. Perhaps. That's it for this first edition of the Bowling News. Bowling News is brought to you by Pizza Hut, home of pan pizza that's winning the hearts of America. Pizza Hut, making it great. When the folks are away, it's my responsibility to keep the clan alive. And that's why I stress the two major food groups, pizza and cheeseburgers. And now Pizza Hut has made my job simple with the new double cheeseburger pizza. Check this out. It's loaded with beef topping and cheese, and I can also get it with bacon. And when I get one for $8.99, I get a second for just four bucks more. And that means tomorrow's breakfast is already made. Pizza Hut, make it great. There's no dashboard light to warn you. No dipstick to check. Yet when warned, they could cause your car to lose control and break it. Don't find out your shocks and struts are worn by accident. Get your shocks and struts inspected at your Monroe retailer soon. Monroe, your safety could depend on it. It will be a who's who of professional bowling's greats as Dick Weber and Earl Anthony lead the field at the AMF Bobcat Senior Classic. Live Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern, only on ESPN. Sunday night, Lenny Dykstra, baseball's hottest hitter, sparks the Phillies' attack. The Hawk, Andre Dawson, provides the power for the Cubs. It's Sunday night baseball, live at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Only three players left in the chase for the $140,000 Kessler Open Championship. Our Mike Durbin is standing by with the top seed, Butch Soper. Michael, what does he have to say? Thank you, Denny. Uh, Butch, you've averaged 223 so far for 40-some games. It's been a good week for you so far. Yeah, um, if, if I ever had a favorite condition of ball, this is it. Whenever you have to throw the ball hard and the lanes are hooking a lot and the scores ain't too high, that's my favorite condition usually. You know, folks, uh, Butch has just confided to me, tomorrow is Father's Day, and he's going to be 41 tomorrow on Father's Day. You're this age now, but you're bowling better than ever. Uh, why is that? Was 41 old? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't think it's old. I think I watched you reach your peak at 42 or something. Um, no, I don't know. It's like, maybe it's like having a job or something. You're at it. I think I've been bowling 35 years, and you got to be getting better at it, bowling for 35 years, wouldn't you think? Hey. I would think so. It happened that way with me, Butch. I don't know. You won last year. You got an opportunity to win here tonight. What's the future hold for Butch Soper? I don't know. As, as, as far as I don't feel 40-41, and my sponsors in Chicago, they love the action. And so do I. I love this sport to death. And as long as you keep in, in good shape and you keep your mind really sound, I think you can last another five five or six years, maybe take a couple years of break and, and join the senior tour. That's the plan for Butch? That, that's it. That's it. All right. The lanes are hooking excessively here. Everybody on the telecast tonight is throwing hard. You have always thrown hard, yet you're not a big person. How does someone your size throw the bowling ball so hard? 
Um, you ever wash my feet? <laughs> I mean, I, feel, I, I, I take five real fast steps. And you get all that momentum going to the line, you can, get, you can pick up some pretty good speed. That's how you do it, just with that momentum going to the line. Exactly. All right, one last question. You've led four tournaments now. You're two and one from the top se seed position. What's your attitude going into this match? Just stay loose and, and kind of like pace yourself. Earl told me, pace yourself mentally. That's what I'm trying to do. It's kind of like, this is tough, waiting around for, for an hour and a half to bowl. It's not easy. I tell you what, it's never been easy. Um, but you're ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Well, there he is. He says he's ready to take on the next match. And the w winner of the next match is going to be John Mazza versus Mark McDowell. Don't go away, because we're going to be right back. No matter what sport America likes, there's one place America looks. Kmart, the one place with the best brands in sports. Keep cool at the beach with an Igloo 54-quart Legend cooler, just $22.97, or 16-quart Playmate cooler, just $13.66. Come to the one place that has it all in one place. Kmart, where to go when you go out for sports. Rico Copier Speed. Rico's revolutionary menu reader does the job with one button. Fast. Power. Rico Copier Power. Built to work to get the job done fast. Rico. Where imagination becomes reality. To find the Rico office nearest you, dial 1-800-63-RICO. Friends, I bring you great news from Bess Western in my new home, America. Like you, Bess Western is remodeling, changing to better serve the people. And soon there will be Bess Westerns here in the Soviet Union. Great news, Covert Jacob. But what is the uh, Best Western? I guess this glassness thing will take some time. <laughs> competition here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl and all Mark McDowell has done through the first two games is uh, average 240.5 and strike 9 out of 12 shots on the left hand lane there's a 10 for 13 guess time doesn't make much of a difference he's ready first good look now at John Mazza out of Mount Clemens Michigan the only left hander on the telecast and uh, I guess that could be construed as a, an advantage either advantage or disadvantage depends how he bowls today if he has the best shot it'll uh, be a big advantage right over the second arrow two four seven always have to get used to thinking left-handed here not what you want to open with no not the easiest spare in the world he's going to move right John's a pretty good spare shooter. He'll throw hard at the spare. Try and hit the two pin on the left. Well, I think he's going to move right. Maybe he's not. Yeah, he did. He's 26 years of age. Still shopping for his first career PBA championship. Trouble. Got it. Woohoo! <laughs> Nearly won earlier this winter. And losing to Jim Pensack in Cleveland. And when Jim was on his real hot streak, he opened up that game with five in a row. Four-step player, the ball held right waist high, you see them. Pushes and steps, pretty free swing. Back swing slightly over his head, nice long slide. Pretty solid delivery. Playing the second arrow, both lanes, but doing so with two different balls, Mark. He's finding the left lane hooking a lot more than the right lane, so he's using the ball that goes a little straighter. He wants to stay around second arrow, so he's on a different ball in each lane. Key to his success this week, uh, a stop at Stonehenge Place in Cuyahoga Falls. Uh, spent two or three hours working out with Fred Borden and uh, worked on some hand positions, push away, and uh, fell right back into his game. 
Freddie is great uh, teaching different wrist positions and hand positions. So as opposed to changing equipment or angles or lines, sometimes you can make the adjustments by just working your hand a little bit. Well, that's what uh, John said was the difference uh, from going from 88 into the next block he averaged over uh, 240. Well, whatever wrist position Mark McDowell is using, you got to stay with it. Working right now as he opens with a double here in game number three. And that was that same solid 10 hit, but the six pin just kind of leaned on the 10 as it went around at that time. His wife, Patty, uh, looks kind of uptight there. Either. The strike gets her closer to that title. Already a shot at 267 game. Defeated Billy Young Jr., 267, 175, and then knocked off Norm Duke, 214 to 205. Trying to make it three in a row, and he does. And uh, what's going through your mind, Mark Baker, if you're John Mazza and you know you've run into a guy that's just doing nothing but throwing strikes? I think John knows that Mark's in the zone we talk about. He's just throwing every ball pure. John has to strike here early to put some pressure on Mark because Mark's so loose right now. You can see the intensity right there in Mazza's eyes. He realizes uh, he's got to jump start things pretty quick here. If not, he could be saying hello to third place. a little high and uh, the two pin remains just not giving it room on that lane then he's got to get the ball out there it's just so hard to come off cold you've been sitting for an hour over there and the lanes are hooking excessively on both sides of, of the lane and you've got to give it room and you tell yourself that but he just doesn't do it he's aiming at that second arrow out there and he's right of it I got closer to the third arrow so you got to believe he made the mistake to the right that time. Huh? That's what it looks like to me. He does have a tendency to get that swing behind his back sometimes, and he has a pretty high backswing, so he can get offline. It's interesting you mention that because he said that was one of the things that he and Freddie worked on was aligning the swing to the target and walking to the target to try and keep things on line. Well, it's harder to walk toward the target when your target is either a long ways to the left of you or to the right of you, depending on whether you're right hand or left. Always, at least it always was for me. I had a lot better uh, success when I could keep shallow lines and, and walk right straight toward my target. Well, this time he gives it a little room and uh, he comes in, up short. He's in trouble. I, it's just so tough to use two different balls on a pair of lanes and try and make your adjustment that way. See, he barely gets the head pin. The head pin does not hit the three pin. Has the bucket there, kicks out the six pin, leaves the three, five, nine, not an easy spare. <laughs> You're lost, your opponent's striking like crazy, not an ideal situation. But he makes the tough spare. You know, Maza won 10 of his first 11 matches in this championship to solidify his number two position. He'd love to have a victory here in the semifinal game. We'll be back with more after this. You talked, we listened. You told us you expect your bank to provide things like convenience, choices, and personal service. At Farmers First, we take our customers' expectations very seriously. That's why we're the leader in all three categories. Farmers First has more product choices and more customer service people serving Lancaster County than any other bank. We also have the most offices, and that's a lot of points in your favor. Hello. Before I visited your lovely Virginia, I was told, don't miss the Blue Ridge Mountains. Well, here they are. And they are splendid indeed. And excellent, I'm told, for camping and fishing. <laughs> here I might mention the stunning view they afford of the Shenandoah Valley below. <laughs> Call for your free Virginia vacation guide. Coming up next on ESPN, the Budweiser Racing Across America Series, the Ohio Derby, $300,000 up for grabs, and uh, if memory serves me correctly, there are at least 18 horses in the field, I think, and that is the maximum, the three-year-olds running a mile and an eighth at the Thistledown Racetrack, which is only, what, a driver and a wedge away from where you and I live, right, Michael? Not that far. Right, northeastern Ohio. Don't forget, stay tuned for the Ohio Derby. And this horse right now, and running in full stride. 
I've always wondered what hits the tent in on that particular hit there. When he comes in late and they say it's the old can opener hit. Leads by 35. Mazza has yet to strike and that's all McDowell has done. Going to his favorite of the two lanes. No longer his favorite, yep. Mark makes a little motion with his thumb that, uh, that Mark McDowell got that thumb down again, just didn't uh, keep that hand behind the ball. How uh, quickly it can change. Mazza's thinking third place at best, and uh, McDowell with a major error. Leaves the big four and swings the door wide open in the fifth. Now it's up to Mazza to take advantage of the open frame as uh, he trails now by 17. Changed his line. Well, that's a gutsy move, Mark Baker. That's not something you want to do in the middle of a match. Uh, the last time I saw anybody try that, Malacosta moved way outside, beat Marshall Holman in Cleveland. He moved from third arrow to uh, first arrow in Cleveland. He was lost. He got to first arrow and threw about eight in a row to beat Marshall in Cleveland. That's the only time I've ever seen anybody else try that. Mazza now moving from second to outside the first arrow, and uh, that was flush city there. Nice reaction. See, see if he does that on the left lane, too. They stayed in over there. Same results with a 3-5-9. A little puzzled as he walks back. I think he felt like he threw a pretty good shot there. The question becomes in our minds is why did he move on the right lane and not on the left? Uh, and that is a good question. I personally think if he's going to make the move on the on 34 that he should have done it on 33 too. Well, he went high in the second, right? On the left-hand lane when he left the two-pin? Or was it the six-pin? He left the six pin in, yeah, the, in the second frame. At a tough spare. No nice trouble. conversion, yeah, right on top of both of those three pin spares. Not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Still a 17 pin lead for Mark McDowell. Yeah. He just made the one mistake on lane 33, uh, you know, in the fifth frame. Otherwise, he'd have had them all. He's obviously, as Mark says, he's in the zone right now, throwing the shots just uh, as pure as he can throw them. And everybody makes mistakes. The trouble is when you make that mistake and you get six and eight out. <laughs> Start leaving those donuts. It's not what you want. Trying to increase it up to 27, his lead. Well, this one rolls in a little late. Slaps out the 10 pin. So McDowell with a miscue early on in this one in the fifth. Comes right back with a key double and now leads by 27. Applauds the effort. Will he end up bowling Butch Soper in the championship game? Only time will tell. Hey, come on. This is any way to spend the summer. No. Make it a summer with Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry. Check inside 12 packs and you could win one of a hundred Bud Label pools. Look for me, Jeff Altman, where you buy your favorite beer, because we're giving away pools all summer long. It's wet, it's wild, it's Bud Summer. Hey man, you need sunscreen, you're starting to peel. Woo! Want a share of the loot in McDonald's $40 million Dick Tracy Climb Stopper game? and win a Big Mac, French fries, Icy Coke, or up to a million bucks. It's easy. Rub out the evidence and follow the clues to solve the crime. You're finished. Dick Tracy. The movie is only in theater. I'm rubbing it out. The game is only at McDonald's. Mike Tyson returns to the ring after losing his title. George Foreman continues the most incredible comeback in heavyweight history. Take an inside look at both contenders with live reports tonight on ESPN Sports Center. It's been an effort. Still a clean game for Mazza, but his uh, spare shooting abilities, Mark Baker, have been tested here. He's uh, kept himself in the match by making all these configurations he keeps leaving. Uh, I'm kind of curious where he's going to throw this shot. 
And they moved out to about the four board. Ooh, that had plenty of speed. No way in the world was that ball going to get back to the pocket. He uh, didn't have any knee on that shot very much. He pretty much just threw a flame, and uh, he's just struggling. That's the worst feeling in the world. Ball great all week, and then get on TV and not have that reaction you had all week. And you just struggle like this. Any chance to make this, Mike? Well, you got to figure out what it is here. The three, six, nine, seven, or three, six, three, yeah, three, six, seven, nine. He's got to hit the three. It's like the right-hander's two, four, eight, ten. He's got to hit the three, six so thin on the right that the six goes into the nine and slides over, and makes it. Gave it a shot. Gave it a run. Ten almost came out of the back end to take out the seven. But uh, for John Mazza, the first open of the semifinal game. Well, he looks like he's having a good time. Trying to enjoy himself under the pressure here of the championship round. That's not easy to do. Not when you're behind by 42 pins with uh, three frames to go. And the guy you're bowling is uh, just whacking the pocket. There we go. Mazza looks up, appreciates the effort as he finally strikes on lane 33. Well, that's the right attitude to take, Mark Baker. Uh, you don't get the TV that often, so when you do get on there, you should enjoy yourself. I've always had a pretty good time on TV, win, lose, or draw, so uh, he's going about it the right way. Also going about it the right way is Mark McDowell, who is trying to dispose of his third consecutive opponent. This time, ball rolls up a hair high, and he leaves the solid four. He uh, just a little soft on that one. Uh, John's struggling, so I don't think Mark was in, as intense on that shot. Just trying to keep the ball in the pocket right now because the match is all his. Operating right now at a 221 pace, which would be uh, more than enough to come away a winner here in the semifinal game. Let's bring that 240 average down a little bit, but that's all. Scores uh, in the medium range throughout the week this week, Mark. And uh, for a while, it looked like you were going to have a shot at the telecast. Yeah, I bowled uh, real well on Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, I don't know what happened. I'm still kind of shaking my head by my middle four games. So uh, take your good weeks and your bad weeks, and I'll be in Fresno trying again. Wealth was spread over both lanes thus far. 11 strikes on 33 and 10 on the other. I know one thing. If I were put Chopper, I'd... Uh, i to be getting my game face on right about this point in time. Mark McDowell's got his attention, are you saying, huh? Well, you're averaging 240, and uh, nice and loose makes a difference. Meanwhile, John Mazza could shoot 210. If he strikes out. Oh! You know, this match is not over yet. We're talking like Mark McDowell's got this all wrapped up, but it's, uh, he goes all the way out for 210. If I add right, uh, Mark McDowell needs a mark. McDowell leads by 31, but uh, as Maza enters the 10th frame, he could change that scenario if he strikes out. John's defense, I think he's probably the most improved bowler on tour the last two years. Had a marvelous winter tour, very consistent. Comes back with a key shot in the 10th, so he is showing you something right at this point. He's showing me a lot. He still has a chance to win this tournament. One more strike makes Mark McDowell Mark. Makes Mark Mark. It's a bit redundant, don't you think? Oh, whatever. Start throwing those big words at me, Danny. I'll... Right now, Mazza would like to be redundant with his shot and strike again. He certainly would. Not much time. And a beautiful shot on lane 33. A nice comeback effort for Mazza. He, uh, that was impressive. He, he was lost for pretty much seven frames and uh, got the key lucky shot and then uh, lane 34, just like uh, McDowell had against Duke. So who knows what's going to happen here? He needs nine to make McDowell get a mark. He's come a long way back and he finishes off the job. So. John Mazza, who was basically lost through the first seven frames, finishes with a five-bagger in a game of 2-10. And suddenly, Mark McDowell has to turn it back on now in the 10th frame. But he did. Boy, he has responded under every pressure situation. Perfect shot by McDowell, who basically slammed the door in Maza's face. Patty thinking to herself, okay, just one more game. That's enough right there. He can throw the next one, next two in the channel and still win. 
Somehow I don't think that'll happen. And nine strikes for McDowell here in game number three. He keeps that average on 240 with uh, getting that temp in right there. And averaging 240.5 if he strikes here, it's a game of 241. John Mazza will finish third, and a beautiful comeback for Mazza, who really showed his grit here in the semifinal game. He just got started a little bit too late. And when you've got the guy who thinks he's number one, Mark McDowell throwing 10 strikes at you in a game of 241, it's pretty difficult to win. Only two players left here in this championship at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California. Mark McDowell and Butch Soper. Who will win? Well, Patty McDowell is keeping her fingers and toes crossed that Mark will. We'll be right back. There's no dashboard light to warn you. No dipstick to check. Yet when warm, they could cause your car to lose control and break it. Don't find out your shocks and struts are worn by accident. Get your shocks and struts inspected at your Monroe retailer soon. Monroe, your safety could depend on it. Introducing new extra strength Rolaids, 250 milligrams stronger than Tums EX. 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. This settles it once and for all. The house we bought could have been a painting nightmare. But Easy Painter One Coater brushes, rollers and pads cut the job down to size. With the lightweight wide track roller, we got guaranteed one coat coverage even faster. With Easy Painter One Coater, the job's done right. Inside and out. Guaranteed. Easy Painter One Coater. Where there's a wall, there's a way. Advantages. We both have Schwab accounts, but I've got the edge. We both have Schwab One, the brokerage account with free checking. Both save on commissions, and both earn income between investments. My old broker charged 80 bucks for an account with checking. At Schwab, we pay zip. But I've still got Jack beat, because I can find my Schwab on checkbook. We give you more ways to succeed. It will be a who's who of professional bowling's greats as Dick Weber and Earl Anthony lead the field at the AMF Bobcat Senior Classic. Live Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern, only on ESPN. Championship frame is brought to you by Midas. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. And let's take a look, Mike Durbin, at the rundown. Game number one, 267 to 175. McDowell wins this one. McDowell finished with a flurry of strikes. This just happens to be one that we picked out uh, that he got in the sixth frame of the action. Really was uh, just not much of a match as Billy Young got two splits early in the match, and Mark McDowell just kept striking. Of course, game number two was a horse of a different color for McDowell because it was much closer. 214 to 205 was the final in that one, but it really wasn't McDowell. It was Norm Duke who made the mistake. Well, Norm Duke got the break of breaking up the 7-10. He had the pocket 7-10 up there. Had only the 7 been to convert to make Mark McDowell strike twice. And we're going to see what happens as he shoots the 7-pin. Again, down the left side of the lane. Over about the third arrow from the left. And the ball never got there. Hard to believe he can miss it on the right under this condition. That opened the door for Mark McDowell to strike in the 10th frame as Norm Duke reacts to his uh, errant shot. And Mark McDowell came through with that strike to win 214 to 205. A game that he threw a bunch of strikes and then, of course, on to the semifinal game. One more time putting the strikes together, and uh, it's a 241 210 win over John Mazza. And Mazza made the big finish at the end to make McDowell mark in the 10th frame. He responded with a strike. There's his reaction. Comes back holding up one finger, indicating one more win. Averaging 241 plus at this point as Mark McDowell threw three games. Championship frame is brought to you by Midas and its dealers across the country. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Nobody can give you a price to repair your exhaust system until they check it out. From here to here. 
at Midas, before you get a price, you get a free inspection. And you get a guaranteed estimate, so you'll know what it'll cost right up front. You get Midas trained experts and a Midas guarantee. And that guarantee is good in over 1,700 Midas shops all across the country. When we give you a price, believe it. And believe this, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Thoroughbred racing action coming your way here on ESPN. It's the Buckeye State's richest and most important event, the Ohio Derby. And hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Lincoln, hoping you'll stay right with us here on ESPN as coming up next, the 56th running of the Ohio Derby. We have 15 three-year-olds getting ready to head to the post to start the second half of the thoroughbred season for three-year-olds. Join us at $300,000 at stake, a mile and an eighth. The Ohio Derby next on ESPN. Well, we're just a couple of moments away from the start of the championship game here and uh, Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California. Just two players left, Butch Soper and a red-hot Mark McDowell. Mark Baker, uh, as you assess the championship game, uh, if you're Butch Soper, what do you do at this point in time? Tell McDowell he's got a phone call? Uh, really, uh, he needs some, needs some strikes. He needs them real fast. Uh, Mark's bowling great. So right now, Butch has to ball his own game, but he needs to shoot at least 230, I think. Well, what about the strategy at this point? If you're Butch Soper, and we'll bring Mike Durbin in as well to comment on this, uh, we'll get both of your, your guys' feedback. Uh, do you want him to start the match, or do you want him to finish the match? Michael, what would you do in this situation? Well, if I'm Butch, I'm assessing the games that he's already bowled, Denny, and he, and he seems to be striking on either lane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the lane that I want to finish on, uh, that I'm going to hit the best. But... I actually think the best strategy would be for Butch to finish on the left lane. That gives him an opportunity to come out and strike twice in the first two frames and put some pressure on Mark McDowell to get ahead early in the match. All right, Mark Baker, uh, what's in the back of your mind? I'd make Mark finish on 33. The only time he's open today has been on the left lane a couple of splits. He has a missed on, he has the, the right lane better than the left lane to pocket every time. Other than that, I'd try to shoot 250 and see what happens. <laughs> well, obviously, if you could do something like that, that would be the key. Uh, what about your success? Let's talk about top seed positions and how well you guys have done through the years bowling from the top spot. Uh, is your record good or bad, Mark? My last time I was on was good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the only one that counts. The first uh, five times, it was a little lacking. And uh, last time I, I won here, I was top seed, and I beat David Ozio. Uh, last time I was on TV, I won again. So I look at those, and I kind of forget the bad ones. Well, how difficult is it to bowl from the top seed position what goes through your mind do you come out more defensive or do you try and be aggressive it depends mainly on the reaction you have i've come out real defensive and my scores have shown it uh it's tough being top you got that you know you spent the night you think about it all night you got all day down here the guys average 240 you're going to bowl so you, you have to uh put that out of your mind and just go at go for it Mike, uh, through the years, I know you bowled from the top seed position on a number of occasions. Uh, what was your uh, plan of attack? Benny, most of my titles came from coming up, just like Mark McDowell's done. I, I came from fourth or fifth several different times from the top seed. I won my first title from the top seed. I think it's interesting to point out here that when I talked to Butch, he was already talking about how long he had to sit and wait. And now he's had to wait longer and watch this guy strike. I think the edge is definitely with Mark McDowell at this uh, point in time. Key question is, uh, when you won your first title, was that in the 19th or 20th century? That was back in the 17th century then, so. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that, San Jose? That was in Tampa, Florida in 1967. 1967, well, let's go back to your first title, Mark. Uh, when was that? It was in Miami in 84. I'll uh, never forget that, it was one of the greatest feelings of my life. Now, the title game has to go by fairly quickly for you, too, doesn't it, Mike Durbin? Well, it does, especially if you get behind. Uh, the whole key here is Butch Soper has got to come out of the gate striking. When you approach a, a championship game, uh, is it hard, Mark, not to think about what you did throughout the week and, and how well you bowled? And maybe that will hold up for the championship game. And, and what happens when you come out and the shot's not exactly the same? I think you have to worry about your keys. Uh, every bowler has a key, whether it be more knee bend, throw it hard, whatever it may be, and that's worked all week for you to lead. So when I've been on TV, I try to think about the certain things I've been using all week to get me there and try not to worry about my opponent. 
Well, uh, we're just a couple of moments away from the start of our championship game here in the $140,000 Kessler Open. Just Butch Soper and Mark McDowell remain. We'll be back with the start of the title game right after this. There's something about the way it moves me. There's something about the way it moves me, too. There's something special about a Lancaster Dodge, cause it's more. More, more, it's more than a car. Customer satisfaction, large inventory selection, great deals, and nobody beats a Lancaster Dodge deal. It's something special about a Lancaster Dodge, and it's more, 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 it's more than a car. Stock up during the summer white sale on Fieldcrest Royal Velvet Classic Towels with coordinating fancies and accessories for your bath. On sale now at Watt & Chan. Watt & Chan freshens your bed with dreamy percales and your choice of cotton or cotton blends. Many with matching comforters and on sale now at Watt & Chan. Thick and thirsty towels soak up the savings at Watt & Chan. Choose from 100% cotton and cotton blends. Perfect for pool or bath. On sale now at Watt & Chan. Sunday, watch the fun, Sunday night. Home run. The Cubs face the Phillies on Sunday Night Baseball, live at 8 Eastern on ESPN. And in case you've just joined us here, the PBA Summer Tour on ESPN Live, uh, here is a breakdown of what's transpired thus far in Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. Mark McDowell, Mark McDowell, and one more time, Mr. McDowell, Mike Durbin. Well, it's... Uh, as you said earlier, redundant, but he likes that redundancy. 267, 214, 241. Jam-packed here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California. Ah, yes, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Don Soper and Patty McDowell. That's the toughest thing in the world to have to sit next to a good friend whose husband is bowling against your husband in the championship match. I know. They do, we do that all the time now. The wives sit there go. Yeah. It's incredible how much they have to smile, too. Butch Soper starts the championship match on the left-hand lane. So he's taking your advice. Make McDowell finish on that left lane. Soper comes out, rolls it a little slow, and it's through the nose, and he is fortunate to escape. It's only the 6'10". Interesting, he goes to uh, a shinier, harder surface ball for the spares, but doesn't do that on the straight. He's the only one using a, what you would say, a hooking urethane ball on the first ball. Conversion of the 6'10", so Sofer spares in the first. Mark McDowell, who has wasted little time is uh, struck equally on 33 and 34. Interesting, he only has one spare, though, on lane 33. See if it's strike or uh, trouble over on 33. Well, we right now might be witnessing the blossoming of a player whose potential is just now coming into focus. Well, he's responded in every pressure, pressure situation that he's had this afternoon, and uh, we'll see how he responds in the ultimate pressure situation of the championship match. for the early lead. And it's the early give to uh, Sober. Four, six, seven. As I mentioned earlier, that lane is the only one he's missed on, just the pocket, and it's been the big four all three times. So that holds true to form all week. If you missed left or right, you left the big four. That's why the scores are low this week. And there's not much you can do when they're that far apart. So McDowell, who came out with a strike in the first, opens in the second and uh, unhappy with the shot, obviously. Now let's see if Butch Soper can step up and perhaps double and take the early lead. Soper couldn't have asked for a better scenario than he's getting right now. A little better ball speed, but this one rolls through. Once again, leaves the 6'10". Just a little nerves, I think, Dan, right now. Just a matter of, of making that quality shot. 
throwing it in the pocket like he did all week long and in practice, uh, just not quite staying with the shot long enough right now. Well, every week the tournament leader always has a little edge in some area, and I asked Butch, I said, if you made a mistake this week, which way could you go? He said, I definitely had to go a little right if I made a mistake. If I set it short and went left, it was big-time trouble, and he said, you know, if anybody had a smidgen of hold this week, it was me because I was throwing at 200 miles an hour. I think it's interesting, too. Uh, I was talking to Mark Baker, we got enough marks around here earlier, and he was saying that on the last day of the finals, the lanes were hooking much more. And then I talked to Butch, and he said they were tighter the last day. So Mark says that's why he's out there bowling right now, and Mark's up here with us. Mm -hmm. Up by 10, trying to win his fourth PBA championship, his second in as many years. Ooh, plenty of room here. Two, four, five, and uh, fortunate the 10 pin wasn't around. Classic over adjustment, Mark Baker? Yeah, he really threw that one hard, and he got the ball out even farther, so he made two adjustments, and the ball rolled out on him. You'll see it, it kind of rolls to the right here, and uh, yeah, if it a hook, you probably have a 2-8 10, so you probably got a break of the ball rolling out. I don't think he's going to win this match with spares. He's going to have to find the pocket to start getting some strikes. And obviously McDowell realizes that he's struggling right now and not hitting the pocket. Well, Mark Mark knows that he has a great strike shot. So if he knows if Butch keeps making spares, Mark's going to throw four or five in a row here. Well, he is virtually struck from start to finish in every game thus far. So championship game won't be any different, I wouldn't suspect. Two for two on the right-hand lane. Now let's see what kind of adjustment Michael Lee makes on lane 33. Let's, let's see if he keeps that speed up. I, I think the last time he thought he made a quality shot and, and wound up getting a split. See if he moves on the approach. See what kind of an adjustment he does make. I have a feeling he's just going to throw it just a little bit harder. Well, he did. Also added a little loft to boot. He made the adjustment to get the ball down further down the lane, but leaves the solid 10. And when you start increasing that speed like that, you're going to leave hard 10 pins. Could have taken a three-pin lead. Still trails by seven. Next week, PBA Touring Pros head to Fresno, California. Meanwhile, you and I will be heading to St. Charles, Missouri, Nick uh, Weber's place. On Thursday evening yep. at 7.30 Eastern Time. That's right. Butch looking to hit the 1-3 for the first time. And a player who lived in the pocket from one end of this house to the other all week long. He was impressive. The lanes were real tough, and he just went across the house shooting 230 every game. Better ball speed, and the adjustment has now been made. Let's see if he can hit the left-hand lane. Okay, now Butch told me he thought the right lane hooked a little bit more than the left earlier. So they thinking that that's why he went up a little bit at it the first time and the ball went high gave it more room in the third frame and he was light we'll see if he can make the fine adjustment between the two to get a double his adjustment probably more with speed isn't it anything else i don't know with either with speed or a little bit he has that way of spinning it as it comes off his hand to get it down the lane this one's down the lane and he catches the wall shot which is the one that he is looking for that was, uh, Butch actually ran that shot out. I've known the man for 12 years, and he's about the most unflappable person I've ever met in my life. That was some emotion for Butch. This is great. It was a lot of emotion for Butch, yeah. You know, he's a California dreamer, a California beach boy from day number one, so he knows what it's like to enjoy things, that's for sure. McDowell, low crouch, comes right back with an X of his own on lane 34. This may be the most important strike of the match right now for McDowell because he's down 17 pins. Soper seems to have found uh, his rhythm and, and quality making, shot making ability. McDowell's got a strike here to put some pressure on him. Down 17, can cut it to seven. Big four, he's just a little soft. The last two shots he's thrown real hard, and uh, he has a great shot, and he knows it. So now it's just a matter of uh, catching Butch. Soper by seven. 
in the six. And, oh, boy, that's a frozen rope on hook and lanes. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that ball's not covering the boards? Oh, man, did he throw that right straight at the pocket? Watch how he comes over the top of the ball. He has a unique release, and it doesn't really start rolling until now. He gets it ball down the lane. It's amazing. Mark, Mark Baker's shaking his head here. How does he do that? That's impossible. Trying to make it four in a row, and this time can't trip out the four. So, Soper's streak ends at three, but he continues to lead here in the championship game. It's tight in the pocket here. Watch your two pin, third from the left. Goes to the sideboard, gets the seven, but doesn't get the four. Boy, did he drop that shot. <laughs> Don says, <"Woo!" laughs> Ah, yes. Much tougher, much tougher on the wives than on the players themselves. To cut it to six. Didn't quite get that one as far to the right as he would have liked, and he leaves the solid four. He liked that shot. He, uh, he thought he threw that ball flush, and it just the last second it flipped up on him, where the ball's been rolling out before. He thought he threw that ball flush. 17-pin advantage for Butch Soper. McDowell trying to come from behind. Three frames left. Mark McDowell has been in this situation. He was down this much to Norm Duke a couple of matches ago in this same situation, the 8th, 9th, and 10th. And he responded there by getting three straight strikes, winning the match. Well, McDowell could shoot 227. Soper is going at a 214 pace right now. And a big time break for McDowell, who leaves only the three pin. Making such an effort to throw so hard with so much loft that he just wasn't physically able to stay behind the ball long enough that time. He's trying to throw so hard here. And right now he's turned early at that point. Instead of staying behind the ball, he's already rotated around the ball's left of his target. So McDowell with a spare in the eighth. And Soper, who leads by 18, could really apply the pressure here. Oh! He threw that one wider and cleaner, and the ball just banked back and left the flush 4-9. Just hard to believe. I bet he didn't leave two or three of those all week. Watch it. He's aiming about the first arrow. And he gets it out to maybe a second or third board. And it looks flush here, and it is, but leaves the 4-9. He's really put in a situation I think he's forced to go for it. Any chance to make this? Yeah. He, well, of course, he's got to hit the four pin on the left and slide across. Butch is a very accurate player, and he's going to go for it. And to slide it over and catches too much of the four pin. So Soper with hand on hip, a bit quizzical because he felt like he threw a pretty good shot, but he opens up in the eighth, leaving the four nine. Still has a possible 221 game. And he's put in a position now where he has to strike on his tougher lane, 33, or he can allow Mark McDowell to get up and close him out. Only five pins difference right now. Soper's got him. Keeps the speed up. Oh, what a marvelous shot, Mark Baker. A clutch shot for Soap Suds in the night. Uh, Butch is known as a clutch player on tour. Uh, he let that 4-9. He shook it off. That was uh, He had to have that strike. That was his best shot of the match. 
You mentioned the fact that he is unflappable, and that basically comes true to form in that situation. A lot of players would have folded up after leaving the 4-9. Sensational shot for Mark McDowell in the ninth. Both of them responding in the ninth frame, but Soper's strike ensures him that he has the opportunity to get up in the tenth frame and win the tournament. As we see a replay of McDowell's ninth frame, the ball going out to about the fourth board, and we've sat here from the angle, we can almost tell every time when he's got it in the right place that he's going to strike. This is to take the lead right here. roll up as he leaves the solitary two pit. And if you watch that follow through that time, it was like a short one. It was like a quick draw with a pistol or something like that. He just didn't get the thumb and the fingers out quick enough. I mean, get the thumb out of the ball quick enough to hit it with those fingers. It was almost like the adrenaline really started pumping and he kind of overjuiced it. Yeah, that, uh, it can happen to anybody. That's a, that's a big shot. That's for the whole tournament. And if uh, you don't get nervous to throw that one hard, you never will. Well, I think the one key, too, is you want to throw it hard, but you want to get it going on the right. He uh, just threw it just threw over, over through the lane, and uh, now it's up to Butch. Strike here would give him a game of 196, his lowest of the four. And that's not going to happen. Really doesn't matter. Um, Sofer still needs a mark. If he'd have struck, he'd wind up 196. He winds up 192. He still needs a mark. We're seeing a replay here. There's the ball really soft on that. He had the Greek church and knocks out the seventh pin. Scenario is set. Sofer needs a mark. Absolutely straps it into the pocket and through the frozen rope for all the week. And Mark, did you ever see him run out a shot and then smack his hands? Uh, I've seen him run and catch a few waves at the beach, but I've never seen him run a shot out in bowling ever. Well, right now he is riding high because Soper has won again his fourth PBA championship. And he'll take the Brooklyn as well. Mark McDowell with a game run at Soper as uh, Butch's wife Dawn looks on. Butch Soper, the latest PBA player to head into the winner's circle. And when you're 40 years old, Mike, uh, you can attest to this. You don't feel like you're going to get there that many times. Each one's sweet at that point. It's, like you say, you may never get there again. Soper taking advantage in front of a capacity crowd here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California. As he collects PBA title number four with a... Very tough 220 192 victory over Mark McDowell. The tears of victory and $23,000 in first place prize money. And we'll be back to chat with Butch Soper and uh, watch him collect the fruits of his labor here in the Bay Area after these messages. Goodrich TA tires perform like great athletic shoes. They grab. They dig. They give you control. BF Goodrich TA tires. BF Goodrich TA tires. The athletic shoes for your car. BF Goodrich TA tires. Some people think he's a Superman. But when a 43-year-old has to throw 75 fastballs, even Nolan Ryan's muscles can ache. So after the game, it's the medicine doctors recommend most for sprains and strains, Advil. For me, it's a couple of Advil, and those muscle aches are long gone. And Advil's gentler on my stomach than aspirin. Today, it isn't aspirin or Tylenol. It's Advil. I feel ready to go another nine innings. Advil. Tablets and caplets. Advanced medicine for pain. <laughs> The house we bought could have been a painting nightmare. But Easy Painter one coater brushes, rollers and pads cut the job down to size. With a lightweight wide track roller, we got guaranteed one coat coverage even faster. With Easy Painter one coater, the job's done right. Inside and out. Guaranteed. Easy Painter one coater. Where there's a wall, there's a way. 
Dickies takes you back through the ages to show you a few of the famous people who've worn Dickies pants. Your dad, Charles A. Lindbergh, Sherlock Holmes, George Washington, Ponce de Leon, Eric the Red, Julius Caesar, Arnold Rockstone. You too can wear these famous pants by Dickies, available every day at famous low prices. Dickies, famous since 1922. Arnold Rockstone, made with Fortra Polyester by Fiber Industries. Nothing like uh, hearing uh, the cheers of victory, right, Butch Soper, uh, as we get a chance to see you and Don uh, having a little fun here at the completion of that match? Thanks. Um, shoot, I'd like to thank uh, so many people. Amazing. Especially my sponsors in Chicago. Um, I, I got four sponsors. These guys are the best. Um, Mike was, was asking me about uh, retirement at 40. Shoot, I feel like I'm 20 right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, Marty Howard has a, uh, a wonderful trophy to present here to you. And I was kidding, Mike Durbin, I said, boy, when you get to be 40 and older, you don't know how many more times you're going to get there. But Marty Butch bowled awfully well. Yeah, he uh, looked pretty good, tough to beat. And you did a great job, some sensational bowling. Just like Kessler uh, whiskey, smooth as silk. <laughs> we want to give you uh, this trophy. Commemorate your fourth win, I hear, in the 20 years you've been on the tour. So uh, congratulations, a marvelous uh, bowling. Marty, thank you very much. I'd like to thank Kessler. I mean, I used to be a mixologist for years, and I poured a lot of Kessler, and I like it. There you go. <laughs> Somehow I knew you were going to get that in there. <laughs> Ted Hoffman, why don't you step over as well? Co-proprietor here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl and a PBA Hall of Famer in his own right. Uh, you can appreciate what a marvelous performance Butch Soper gave us here this afternoon. Yes, Danny, it was really great. Butch, congratulations. I know Earl had to leave to go to the senior tournament, but if he was here, wish you luck also. And congratulate you on your big win. And I have a nice check here for $23,000. And on... And on behalf of Kessler and Earl and myself and everybody here at Dublin, nice going. We're looking forward to seeing you next year, and I'm looking forward to having Kessler involved again. They've been very good to bowling, and we hope to see them back again next year. And again, congratulations, Butch. Thank you, Teddy. All right, Butch. All right. Yes. I'll tell you what, the, uh, everybody's so helpful here at uh, Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. I mean, Teddy's been running all over the place all week. And I'd like to thank Candy, my babysitter behind the lines. All the scorekeepers, thanks everybody. This is great. Shoot. Yeah. Michael, a question for our newest champion? Well, Butch, you came out in that last match, uh, kind of lost a little bit the first three or four frames, found it, and you were ahead. Suddenly the 4-9 popped up there in the eighth frame. What went through your mind then? I knew I was so close. I mean, that shot was so minute. It was just, I mean, like one-tenth of a mile an hour in speed, the ball would have been flush. And... <laughs> I mean, you come that close and leave a split, that's not fair. But then, uh, <laughs> shoot, um, I congratulate Mark, he bowled great. I tell you what, I, I was scared. You want to last match him striking him? I'm on the practice fair, I ain't doing that good. Man. <laughs> I was going to say, what was your strategy heading into the championship game? Mark McDowell had averaged 241 for the first three games, so you knew he was going to bowl well. I know. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't usually root against the player I'm bowling against, because when I do, they strike every time. So I just kind of like, uh, just watch their reactions and go for it. And, who knows, I've watched so many games on TV with 260s, and all of a sudden, sometimes it's paybacks when they shoot 190 against you, and you know, it's, it's nice sometimes. It's easy. <laughs> One more question there. You got the strike in the ninth, he didn't strike out, so now you need the mark in the tenth frame, but you, on the lane, you left the 4-9 before, so what was your mental preparation there? I say it's amp it up one little bit more, <laughs> and I feel good too, it was right there, see. <laughs> yeah. See, it's been fun. I want to thank everybody here. Hope you all enjoyed it. I sure did. I tell you what. <laughs> well, just relax, because we'll be right back to chat with Don and the rest of the Soper family. The winner of the $140,000 Kessler Open, Butch Soper, with a marvelous victory over Mark McDowell. When the folks are away, it's my responsibility to keep the clan alive. And that's why I stress the two major food groups, pizza and cheeseburgers. And now Pizza Hut has made my job simple with the new double cheeseburger pizza. Check this out. It's loaded with beef topping and cheese, and I can also get it with bacon. And when I get one for $8.99, I get a second for just four bucks more. And that means tomorrow's breakfast is already made. Pizza Hut, making it great. How to make good old-fashioned icy. First, 
put the kettle on the flame. While you're waiting, bag your pot, watch the telly, check the kettle. Back your flat, bring up your brother, check the kettle. Now there's a faster way to make fresh food iced tea. The iced tea pot by Mr. Coffee makes two quarts of refreshing iced tea in less time than it takes to boil water. Walk your feet, come back, check the kettle. The iced tea pot by Mr. Coffee, the modern way to make old-fashioned iced tea. Gosh, it's like an old family reunion here. Mark McDowell uh, averaged 241 the first three games. Did you think you were going to win the title? I really did. I felt good. I had the, the shot down pretty well. I was relaxed, and I had a little trouble with the left lane, but I really felt, you know, I could get in there. Butch was a little slow out of the gate, and I wanted to get on him early. I threw that split in the second frame, and that, I think that ended up costing me. You know, Mark talked about the fact that Butch might have you end up finishing on the left-hand lane, right, Mark? That's the only lane you would split on because the right lane you owned. You got a couple solid tens and a four pin, but the, the right lane was yours. The left lane was your undoing, but you bowled great. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't down here with you, but I had a good time in the booth. <laughs> Butch, when you knew that you were going to bowl Mark McDowell, uh, what was your strategy heading into the title match? I knew if he had a, if he had a bad lane, it was a left one. And um, a lot of guys don't like to finish um, last. You know what I mean? Because it's a tough one to finish in last. But uh, when you know somebody's having a problem in that lane and you're like even, I was kind of even, so I decided to put him on the, his bad lane. Michael, how about a, uh, a response from Dawn Soper here? I know she's got John in standing by as well. Do you get the check, Dawn? No. It's, we've been wanting to build a home in Lake Havasu for quite a while now, and this is going to really help so we can start this summer. That's one of your favorite places, isn't it, Lake Havasu? Yes. yes it's fun there. Yep. And what's this young man's name down here? Jondon? Jondon. What do you think of this, Jondon? <laughs> Remember, Jondon, this is cable. This is cable. Mark, uh, you have a question yeah. for Butch Soper? I have one question for you, buddy. I've known you for 13, 14 years. I've wow. never seen you get that excited in the 10th frame. Was that the most you ever run a shot out in your life? That was it. Man. That was it. I... <laughs> I mean, we sprinted a few right. times to catch a few angel games, but uh, well, I usually never get lane. excited. I usually never get excited, and um, I guess I had, I don't know, maybe it feels good to get excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I can thank everybody again, especially Kessler, really. Thank you, everybody. What we should do now, too, is bring out Patty McDowell, who raced from the San Francisco International Airport to get here. Patty, come on out here quickly here, and we'll get uh, a response from you as well, perhaps. Uh, has to be awfully difficult to stand by and then sit next to Butch's wife and watch a title game like that. It was. It was. It was really tough, but I made it here, and I'm very happy about that. And Mark did a good job. Of course, you guys have been married, what, about a month now? A, month. a little over a month, yeah. It's, uh, it's real exciting, and we sweated it out having her get here, but she made it just in time. And just look what you have to look forward to all these years. <laughs> it's going to be tough. <laughs> Always exciting when you win, though. Butch Soper, a marvelous performance for you, and uh, we look to see you, obviously, next week in Fresno. Perhaps you could make it two in a row. Yeah, it'd be nice. Really? Uh, I've never even thought of that until now. Yeah. <laughs> um, keep letting them hook. I'll be there. Thanks. Well, we would be remiss right now, Mike Durbin, if you and I didn't thank Ted Hoffman and also the great one, Earl Anthony, for inviting us here to Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl and the good folks at Kessler as well because they've sponsored a marvelous event. Well, they're quality people here, they're quality people at the bowling center, and we just hope that they keep sponsoring tournaments for the PBA in the years to come. And I think the one key right now as we'll get ready to close is, Butch, just ten years now before you get to bowl the seniors. <laughs> no, actually it's nine years and one day, and you know what Earl said last night? He said if I win this thing, he'd bowl doubles with me next year. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Is that so? Well, uh, Mr. Baker and Mr. Durbin, a final comment from you on uh, uh, the transpiring here today. Uh, I like being in the booth. I average about 260 up there today. I didn't throw any bad shots. Didn't uh, miss a spare, did didn't you? Didn't miss a spare. I had to pocket every ball. Uh, it was a great show. It was uh, fun for me to watch Butch when, uh, growing up in Southern California, you either idolized uh, Barry Asher or Butch Soper. And uh, Barry and I are good friends. See my buddy win. Uh, All right. He had to lose. Well, we're going to have to say goodbye here from Dublin, California. I hate to cut you off there, Mr. Baker, but we'll have another opportunity, perhaps. Thanks so much for joining us here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. The championship round finals of the $140,000 Kessler Open have been brought to you by... Advil, advanced medicine for pain, used only as directed. by Easy Painter, who brings you 